At this point, it's evident that the Clippers really have uh, a huge interest, you know, for Buddy Heald. Uh, Buddy Heald played for the Pacers. Um, he's definitely a, a very good shooter, very good, you know, guy who could space the floor for the Clippers. And I think he'd be a phenomenal pickup for them in regards to what the Clippers would be looking for, or having another stretch shooter on the floor that can make their offense a little bit more well-balanced. Because if they had somebody like him, hypothetically, uh, they wouldn't really have to, you know, they wouldn't be in dire need sometime of the services of somebody like Norman Powell coming off the bench, dropping 20, 25 points because they got somebody in the start lineup other than Kawhi and PG who can have a 20 point night if he catches fire. So, I mean, with that being said, that would be an ultimate situation for the Clippers. But to me, in order for that to happen, in order for that trade to actually go through, it's probably not going to have to, it's probably not going to happen this off season. Just like the possible trade proposal for, for Malcolm Brogdon. That's another player that the Clippers were highly interested in or still are. In order for those trades possibly to go through, they're going to have to probably either do a three-team trade, a three-way trade deal, which will make sense for all parties and everybody gets equal value in order for the trade to work due to contractual situations and everything like that. Or, and or, I should say, they're going to have to wait until the trade deadline in mid-season form, or when the season's in, you know, right before the uh, mid-season, right before the season goes out they're gonna have to do it that way because by that time the roster will be shifted rotated in regards to who Ty Lu knows who's gonna be you know where they need to be who's who's serving more value in regards to you know minutes of guys being put on the floor and by that time hopefully this year they've been figured out something they could do with Rocco and give him more minutes and put him on the floor because Robert Covington is too good of a weapon you know especially defensively to have him sitting on the bench when you have some guys in the game who maybe deserve playing time, not saying they don't, but I would say he deserves some playing time as well. So, I mean, with that being said, I think that, um, that that's going to be the only way they'll either, you know, sniff one of those type players in a Malcolm Brogdon and or, you know, a Buddy Heald. And I think personally, I think they want they would like to have. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon more simply because Malcolm Brogdon is a point guard and he can handle the ball and they don't have to worry about Russell Westbrook and some of his antics on the floor of his turnovers that hurts their chances of winning long term if they had somebody like Malcolm Brogdon because see then they can rotate they can have Russ starting you know the first uh, the first six to eight minutes of the first quarter and then let Malcolm Brogdon come in the remainder of the first quarter going into the second maybe most of the second and then you know going to halftime switch it up like that or they could they could put Malcolm Brogdon in the one and have Russell Westbrook come off the bench which I think he would be way more effective that way because some of his mistakes won't hurt the Clippers as much because he's running with the second unit rather than the first unit you know, when you play a game, especially when you play in playoff games and big games of magnitudes, it's all about first impression. Sometimes when you come out and smack the other team in the mouth right in the beginning, the other team doesn't have time to recover because there's still days from what you've done in the beginning that really blindsided them. And with Russell Westbrook, sometimes coming out with that sense of urgency is always going to be there, I think, because Russ plays with an edge. But coming out with the right mentality and playing the game with less mistakes and less turnovers, that's where Russ might be an Achilles heel for the Clippers. So if they had somebody like a Malcolm Brogdon, they can run their offense a lot more fluid and a lot more, you know, it'd be a lot better for them because I think as as a as a unit they would get into a rhythm quicker and on top of that the camaraderie will build a lot quicker with a better point guard or should I say a better decision making point guard because Russ is a Hall of Famer we can't you know deny him that or take that away from him but at the same time when you have a better decision maker things just go better in life period that's just the way it is especially when it comes to sports because the guy that's making the decision to pull the trigger and shoot or shoot a basketball or pull the trigger and throw a football fit the yard for a touchdown or whatever the case may be his decision is is everything because his decision his timing is everything in regards to your opportunity for winning so Russ you know kind of alters that you know for the Clippers he always that for any team that he's on which is the reason why he's never been a part of or won any championships because he just has one mentality and that's good when it's good but when it's not working it hurts everything else in the process so I can understand them wanting somebody like Malcolm Brogdon just to have a little bit more more control of the offense and having somebody a little bit more control of their game and Malcolm Brogdon can shoot a lot better 
then Russell Westbrook can. Let's just be for real about that. He can. So with that being said, I think, you know, somebody like Buddy Hield as well, he can come out and stretch the floor and give them an op- give them more opportunities of having somebody who's lethal, which will take more pressure off of Kawhi and PG because you can't double team them with a shooter like that on the floor. So his value would make the Clippers, you know, rise up even more because of the type of player that he is and the type of commanding that he would, you know, command from defenses because he's that type of shooter that you just don't want to leave wide open because he's one of the top shooters in the NBA, especially per- percentage wise so i understand where the clippers are going with this i understand what direction they like with these two players i personally think they do want malcolm Brogdon more because he's a point guard but i definitely think you know the more and more they look at the trade scenarios that uh indiana is offering and things like that where i think they i think they feel like they have more of an opportunity possibly to sneak or you know pry um buddy healed away from indiana more so than they do with the celtics and getting malcolm Brogdon taken away from them because Malcolm Brogdon is a big part of what they do in regards to you know winning you know the last couple years you know the Celtics have been in the conference finals and the finals so and Malcolm Brogdon has been there the whole time you know with that specifically the last two years so I mean I think they like the process what they have with Malcolm Brogdon so getting Malcolm Brogdon out of the hands of the Celtics would be like overly tough it would be like really really difficult for them to do so I mean if it if, if the Clippers are looking that direction, it's going to be even harder, especially when they backed out on the situation due to the, the um, Malcolm Brogdon's injury uh, report that came out this offseason. They kind of pulled back a little bit. And then I think the Celtics kind of just said no and just they, they decided to keep Malcolm Brogdon themselves. So I definitely think the Clippers have a lot better chance of getting Buddy Hill. They just might have to wait until midseason trade deadline to possibly get him. Um, hopefully, barring no injuries. And um, by that time, the Clippers would have more you know, Tyloo would have more in his mind of who uh, who who's who's getting who's gonna be in the rotation, who's getting more playing time, all those type of things. So I mean, and then on top of that, they'll have more of a game plan of how they really wanna, you know, construct things and do things. And then on top of that, they might actually have more chemistry if everybody can stay healthy and play and they can see what they have and see where they are and see if they really actually can you let somebody go and it and the process will still go the same in regards to them, you know, playing at a high level to get somebody like Buddy Hill. So I think that's where we are with it. I think that's, you know, pretty much from what I could see how it's going to go. You could read some other sources and see what you got or see what you get out of it and leave any comments in the comment section and we could talk about it and go back and forth. 